true praise in this place. God has been merciful to us this whole week. He's been showing us grace this whole week. He's been showing us his works this whole week. This week should be a week of commitment. This week should be a week of saying, no, I'm, Lord, I'm going to follow you. Lord, I'm going to give my life to you. Lord, I'm going to make you my way in no other way. Lord, show me the way. You take the will of my life. You drive us to our destinations in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. You know, I, I really want to uh, just thank God for being in here and having his presence here. And he's really kind of speaking to my heart and doing something we did when we opened this church, actually. And it was an anointing of the most unusual type. It was when we would take oil and we would anoint our feet, our shoes. And we took over and prayed over grounds by every step we took. And this past week we had um, an outreach for a safe summer and we were praying that everybody who would have uh, safe travels going home and have a safe summer for the children who are out playing. But we have something incredible here today. We have missionaries that go. They actually answered the call to go and spread the gospel. And they reminded me of how when we were sent out and to go bring the gospel, we did something special. We took oil and we anointed our shoes so that wherever our feet stepped, we prayed and we took back that ground for Jesus. Do you, does anybody, was anybody here from the beginning that actually remember us doing this? Okay, only a couple. Okay, so this is something different. So in your neighborhoods, in your, that is your missionary field, right? Yep. In your homes, your neighborhoods, where you work, work, all of this is your mission field. And the stores you shop, the doctor's office that you go visit, the place you bring your kids to get watched while you're at work, they're all your missionary fields. And we had Pentecost Sunday not too long ago where Jesus sent his Holy Spirit. Right? So then that gave them power to go. And with the move of the Holy Spirit, I just really feel like you need to be empowered today to go and bring the good news wherever your feet take you. Raise your hand if you understand what I'm talking about. You understand what I'm talking about? Okay. So do we have any uh, background music we could put on for a minute? I'm going to put you on the spot. Well, you get that ready. So go ahead. It's funny because... I'm talking about the gifts of the Spirit today, only part of them, and next week we will, I lied again, next week we will wrap up this, <laughs> this, this uh, series. But this is one of the, the gifts of God, a word of knowledge, a word of power, a word of prophecy. A word. So as they get, I, I, if you want to get your feet anointed, I'm not coming to you today, you're coming to us today. Because she just talked about going. And if you need to claim victory over your house, over your work, over your children, over your, your whatever you need to claim that victory over, and you have been sent out to go, I want you to come up. You can start a line. It doesn't take long. I'm not going to pray a million words over you in a five-minute uh, dis dissertation yeah, about right prayer. So you can just start coming. Why they get so just if you can lift your foot. If not, take off your shoe. Oh, I guess I can bend no, down. No, 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 no. Come on. Give me your foot. Your shoe. Give me your shoe. Sorry. Put your shoe on. Okay. Give me your shoe. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you can put it down. Father God, if she just moves forward in life, to let her take over lands, let her take over positions, let her take over finances, let her take over places that are... Uh, needing her your dominion father god let her be the conduit to your go and to be your your hands and feet in the world amen, amen. Okay. Yeah. 
Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Father God, place thy is a conduit for you, Father God. Let these feet go to places that have never been before. Let her mouth be a, a conduit for you. Let her spirit be there for you, Father God. Let her move into places that need moving. Let her speak words of wisdom and, and into places that need help, Father God. Let all dominion come against her, Father God. Watch over her, guide her, lead her, and love her. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Come on, Daisy. No, you don't have to. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father God, I would anoint these feet as she walks through this neighborhood, as she walks with her children, her grandchildren, the places that she goes. Lord, let these feet be your light into a path that is dark. Let it lead her and lead others to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You don't have to. Come on. Don't. I don't care. Come on. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Father God, you watch over Linda. You let her feet, you let her testimony open the doors for people, Father God. Let her testimony that you've given her, the situations that she's gone through, let her testimony to open up doors and avenues for people that are lost, that have been on drugs and have addiction. Let her be that conduit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Lord, I anoint this woman, Father God. You've given her 76 years of good and bad all together, Father God. And I ask in the next 76 years that these feet do not stop going until you make them stop. So, Lord, let her keep bringing that light to people's lives. Let her be that shining light so she can glorify your name in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, shut Lord, I pray that anywhere that Christina and Will go and their family goes, that they're not just the light, but they bring the word and they bring it powerfully, that nothing can stop them from moving the gospel or bringing heaven down here on earth and to do the work that you have called them to do with no fear, no shame, no crying about it, and just do what you have called them to do, Lord. I don't give them a spirit of Jonah, but I give them the spirit of Elijah to do the work that you have called them to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I shun the da ba 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 da 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 ba 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 di shun the ha ba ba. I'm gonna get your pretty shoes dirty. In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name, I'm gonna get you good. I'm gonna get you. Father God, I just thank you for El and the A team here today, Father God. That whatever you put on their hearts, Father God, that you allow it to happen. And you allow their ministry, their work, their business to flourish, to bring the gospel to places that don't hear it because it's music, Lord. They think they can't. Let his creative spirits always be open to new avenues for you to bring the word of God, to speak the word of God, to sing the word of God, to praise the word of God, to praise you as the creator of heaven and earth. I pray over them as they go into the world that they be that conduit for you. And watch over these babies. And bless them and keep them safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, brother. Antonio. Lord, you have a calling on this young man. <laughs> In the name of the Father. I don't know what God is going to do with you, but I know you have a calling on your life. And wherever God places you, his feet are going to get you there. And he is going to watch over you, and he's going to keep you safe, and you are going to bring many people to Jesus. Amen? Oh, Shanda, da, da, ba, ba. I want the whole family. You don't have to get down. You don't. Ah. Oh, Shanda, da, ba, ba, ba. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Lord. I thank you for these people. I thank you for your mission, Mary, that you called them to go to places, Lord. They need feet, though. They need them to be in good position. They need them to be good healing, Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask for healing that they can go walk and do your work, Father God. The country that they are in are, not, are so unpeopled, reach, Father God. So many Muslims out there, Father God, and they need these feet. 
to go, Father God. And I pray in Jesus' healing name that the Spirit heals today, Father God, that we don't have to wait expectantly, but this plant is where this foot is getting healed. I pray for this whole family, a blessing upon them as they go, Lord. Praise funds for them in Jesus' name that they are able to go quickly and to spend time together in the states with loved ones and to feel your presence, Lord. So wherever you send them in this time, I ask that doors open and funds are raised. And this little fruit right here gives mama some peace. And <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. You're good. You're healing, brother. <laughs> Come on. Hello, Michelle. Lord, I thank you for Michelle and these feet, Father God. Watch over them, Lord. Bless them as they come and as they go. Let her be a blessing to others, Father God. Let her keep serving the way she served this week. The Lord, bring joy and happiness and smile to people's faces. Wherever she goes, let her spirit light up the and light up the presence in that room to show your and greatness in Jesus' name. Amen. And then, oh, this little man, this big man with big feet, <laughs> Father God, that you keep growing him. But no, you don't just grow him to grow him. You grow him into the God, godly man that you have called him to be, Father God. The anointing on him that to, to serve you, Father God, is great. And I pray that wherever he goes, that his attitude always shines, Father God, for you and through him into others, Father God, that as the world throws obstacles at him, he's able to deflect them and to be able to walk through them with the mighty power that you have given him. In Jesus' name, amen. My little man. Come here, Marisol. I want to pray both for both of you. Can, can we do a family? Marisol? Come here, Joe. Come here. Father God, I lift up Marisol, I lift up Gio, I lift up every situation in their lives right now that they can keep moving forward, that they, they can keep walking in your presence there in the good times, the bad times. Lord, yes, troubles come, but you are always consistent and you are the foundation. So Lord, I pray a blessing upon Gio, the men, manly men come into his life, that he walks with God. Father God, and I pray that her heart stays pure like Mary, and she is able to always let that light shine inside of her during the good, bad, and ugly, Father God. And I pray that together as a family, that they are conduits for your love, your mercy, your kindness, your greatness to spread the gospel among the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, Lola. Oh, shana, na, 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 na. Lord, we have a need and problems with health, Father God. And I, it starts with the feet. I anoint the feet to be healed and then the knees to be strong again, Father God, to be able to walk and to speak and to teach and to talk and to love. But Lord, these, these feet, anywhere they, they go, Father God, they bring her knees and body with to proclaim the gospel in Jesus' name. Let her claim dominion and power over her body, over people, over healing, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for our sister Harvest that she is Miss Jane is back with us today, Father God. So I pray a blessing over her body, the mind, her soul, her spirit, these feet, that they touch everything they touch that comes for your glory, Father God. Lord, watch over her, bless her, let her be your light in a dark world, Lord. Let her family see these feet move and know who Christ is to come and be a part of it with her, Father God. In place of the Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, walk with no pain, no suffering, no harm. You are healed in Jesus' name. Oh, my Spanish. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Lord, I pray over this beautiful family 
They do open up the avenues and doors for jobs, their papers to come through, they, 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 this car, apartments. I pray that they don't have to leave, but if you do have to send them and they need to go somewhere else, wherever these feet go, that they bring the light of Jesus. And I pray that this girl, Eliana, stays strong in her faith. Give her peace, give her rest, give her solace in your presence. And let these feet take them wherever they need to go to spread the gospel. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Oh, I'm not done yet. All right, well, I'm done on my knee for a minute. Hold on. Come on. Oh, we got a wheelchair. I can do anything I want with you. Come on. Hi. How are you, Jess? I'm good. I'm good. Anxious. Lord, you've made this daughter of yours very special. I pray that the anxiousness leaves her and joy fills her from the bottom of her feet to the bottom of these tires to the tops of her head, Father God, that you just walk with her all the time, Father God. And I pray that her infectiousness to people always shines through so people ask why she's always happy, why she's always smiling. And I want her to be able to say, because Jesus lives in me and through me, and I am his conduit to do your work. So Lord, just bless her, watch over her, and guide her in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, girl. All right. Oh, we got a couple more. Wrong button. There we go. Oh, I got it all wet. Go ahead. You're good. All right. Can you go that way, please? Hello. Good morning. In the name of the Father and the Son. Father God. You have given this woman, godly woman, many obstacles. And Lord, I pray provision, I pray guidance, I pray love, I pray all needs be taken care of in Jesus' name. And as you are doing this, Father God, I pray that these feet stay strong and per persevere and have endurance in them to keep moving forward, to not let the devil take her joy and happiness, to move and let her be that shining light that she always is. Even when times are bad, that she brings a smile to people. And I pray that these feet bring joy to people because of her attitude for you, Father God. Let your light shine truly through her and into others so she can keep glorifying your name in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, hi, Taya. You want to get safe for us? Yeah, come here. Baby feet. Jesus said, bring the babies to me. Here, tell you, I can't reach you. Uh, Lord, I pray that her, her love for you to come to church never dies. It always just keeps growing. Let her be strong in the name of Jesus. Let her love the way Grandma loved. Let her serve the way she's Grandma served. Let her always find peace and joy and happiness in Jesus. Let these feet in her school Show Jesus' love in everything Taya does. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, guys. Come on. We're not done yet. In the name of the Father, the Holy Spirit. Father God, thank you for Christopher and all his special help and how he always is willing to lend a hand. Lord, let these feet go wherever he goes. And as he goes, Lord, I pray an anointing upon them that they gather people to follow him, Father God, that he's able to speak boldly and proudly in the name of Jesus, that the love never leaves him, that you have given him in his heart to be your hands and feet and to do it boldly and proudly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go wash yours. <laughs> yeah. In the name of the Father, the Son. Holy Spirit. Come on, Ma. Come here, Grandma. I got a two for one. In the name of Father. Ooh. Sorry. Uh, uh, in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father God, I just pray a blessing over 
Grandmother and Zam and granddaughter, Father God, and Natasha and my kiss baby, Father God, that you're able to just always let them love each other, let them be loved to others, let them always love the family and put the family first, Father God. And as they do that, Lord, in any situation, let these feet take them there proudly and happily to be able to spread your message where it needs to be spread. In Jesus' mighty name, amen? Amen. 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 No, that's not helping. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Father God, thank you for Ron and his service, not just at your church, but in, in the world, Father God, that he protected us and, and sacrificed his life for us. The people that we call free is because of men like this. So, Lord, I pray a blessing upon his body, his soul, his feet, his knees, his arms, his body. Father God, that nothing can harm him, even with all these things that can't be you and had, Father God, that it's not in his, your nature to harm, but to cause good, Father God. So Lord, I keep praying a blessing upon these feet wherever he walks, that he serves happily and open-heartedly for you, Father God, to be that light in any situation that he is in. And Lord, he is healed in Jesus' name from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, that he walks in the presence of God. Amen. 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 Oh, Shazam. Father God, you've called this man into the into the world, but to be a, 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 your conduit. And, and Lord, he's supposed to be the head of the household. So let him lead. And as he leads, Father God, not just this house and in the community, let these lights, these feet, feet always remember Christ crucified. Christ's mercy, Christ's love, Christ's goodness to serve where he needs to serve and to lead where he needs to lead, Father God. We pray a blessing upon his family as they go out into the world that you bless everything they, they touch and prosper for their family. Let his soul and spirit be a light into a world that needs, that needs it, Father God. And let the darkness come out and let the good come in. And Lord, I pray that all addictions in this man's life would be annihilated by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Could everyone please stand? Oh. Who did it? I'd like to read this to you. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Lord, I just want to pray that every step they take, they take with power and authority in the name of Jesus to take over the towns and the areas and the places that you send them, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that they go and preach the good news to those who have not heard. I pray for divine appointments in your holy name. Amen. 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 And let's give it up for Val. Come on. Give it up for I, I don't believe in anything that I said. I believe in divine appointments. I believe I don't believe in luck. 
I believe in God's hand and blessings upon people. And again, we'll be speaking in a couple minutes about the gifts of the Spirit. And this is just a great example of how God moves in places when we don't <laughs> we, we don't know what to expect. I mean, uh, we. How many of you guys like superpowers? How many of you guys like the Avengers and Superman and all this? Like, you know you have the Holy Spirit in you, the only power. You are a superhero every day. All you need to do is to call upon him. And today we got to see that firsthand, a prophetic word for each and every one of you. Man, I'm just, good job, babe. Good job, guys. <laughs> Hey, I'm, uh, I'm going to let the kids go because we've been here a while. And the kids need to run around. They need to get their snack in. Uh, we got to feed them with sugar and learn about God. Amen? So kids, you guys, my impact kids, you guys are dismissed. Don't forget at the end of service, we still have, we are still fundraising for kids for the youth camp. Give that to mama or to, to that table over there. So items will still be ready for uh, sponsoring and helping the kids raise money and awareness to go to youth camp. It's so awesome because last, like COVID hit and it was all crazy, never And now you blink your eye and the babies that were here when we started are no babies no more. They're our youth now. And it's like, what happened to our babies? So we have new babies. And, and, and so our young adults are getting ready for camp, and I'm so excited for them to actually get to send people this year. Hey, if you are a first-time guest here today, we want to welcome you. We want to say thank you. We actually have a special gift for you. So if you are a first-time guest, on your seat is something called a U-card. Do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Fill it out. And, and actually, you can raise your hand. We have a gift for you from here because we know going to church, church is going to be a little weird. Uh, again, especially if you've never seen that before, how the, the spirit works. And we're not here to freak you out. We're here to teach you what the word says about God. Amen. We're here to teach you the truth and not some made up stuff about who God really is. Amen. So fill out that card. Like us on Facebook. Those are ways that we can communicate with you in touch with you and let you know what we are doing throughout the summer and the months and the weeks ahead. So uh, we thank you for being here and Christina will give you a bag on the way out. All you have to do is hand in that U card. If you've been here for a thousand years, you know what to do with that. If you have a prayer request, write your prayer request on it. If you want information about baptism or anything, any questions, you can write it on there and I will get back to you within about 24 to 48 hours. Amen. So, uh, we have, we worship the Lord with our song, we worship the Lord with prayer, we worship him with prophetic words and tongues, but we also believe in uh, giving, being generous. Not just uh, a tithe and offering, but being generous, about giving. Because God gave the first tithe, his first son to us. He gave us the best, and so we also believe this is a part of worship. So could you guys get start getting your tithes and offerings ready? Uh, there's many different ways that you can give. You can give through our P.O. Box 155. You can scan the QR code. You can donate through our website at impact-church-maywood.org. My favorite used to be writing checks, but now it's Zelle because it's fast and easy, and I can send it whenever I want, <laughs> and there's no fee. So <laughs> I like that. So anyways... Uh, we are supposed to be good stewards of God's money, right? So, Lord, Father God, as, as our, our your people and the people that you have placed in, in our presence here today, uh, start our, our giving, our offering to you, Father God. Let this giving fill your storehouse this week, Father God, that we're still able to help the, the, the widows, the orphans, the people in need to help with food uh, or car or gas or a bill or Whatever we need to use it for, Father God, let there be enough and an overflow, Father God, to spread, not just into our church, but into the community, Father God. Let us always be your hands and light, Father God, and let us do it with a generous heart, 
not a stubborn, I have to heart, Father God. Let us do it generously and freely and willingly in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Jesus said what? I love a cheerful. He didn't say I hate a cheerful giver. He says I love a cheerful giver, right? So uh, as you guys are doing your offerings, I've got a couple of highlights to go through with you about this week. Can, uh, uh, the first one is, uh, I, don't, I don't know these by heart. So can somebody show me <laughs> the first highlight, please? Uh, we had an outing over the week, and it was an awesome event, but uh, if you can... Good morning, impactors. Take, 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 I don't know why that's there. I, I keep taking it out. It keeps finding its way back in there. So can I have the next slide, please? Thank with Pastor L, uh, God's Heritage came out, Darlene Bar Bar Barber uh, with Evang Scream Evangelist. It was just an amazing event. The Firehouse Dream uh, with Jasmine Lopez came out to be a part of this. CEF, who we're going to be partnering with to do a five days club to preach the gospel to the world, to the, well, yeah, because <laughs> we're doing it three times. So we're going to be doing it three different times with them. Uh, these five-day clubs for kids to be off the street and be on our grasp, in our hands, and in God's hands. Amen? So it was just a great event. We had a lot, like I said, we fed probably close to 300 people that day. If you served that day and were there, please stand up. If you were there that day, please, Linda, you were there. Bobby Jean, you were there. Jermaine, you were there. Bass was there. Stand up. Michelle was there. Jessica. You guys, you without your help, this that's what this sign stands for, guys. I'm impact is God is first in this church. He's ahead of this church. We don't do anything without God's movement in this church. Your impact, your walk with God is more important to me than doing an outreach on the street because if you don't know Jesus, I'm not doing my job right. Amen? And thirdly, we make up impact together as a community, as a group, as a church, as a ministry. And if it weren't for you guys helping and serving, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So thank you guys for making that day so special. Amen? All right. So we have a couple more coffee and conversations Sunday at 930. Next Sunday is Father's Day. So we uh, this may be postponed for next Sunday. But most... Most Sundays we have 9.30 conversations. So the women get together, hang out, and pray and talk and get to know each other. We also have a lot going on. Party with the pastor today uh, after service. Party with the pastor. And then party with the pastor in Spanish also. This Starting something. We haven't been on the streets praying. And I think this is why God had us do this today. Is to anoint our feet. Uh, summer's here. And that means we get to go. We don't have to be in four walls to pray. So we're going to go to the gazebo right here uh, every Wednesday at six o'clock, starting this Wednesday, uh, to have a, a prayer meeting. So if you would like to come join us, it's right outside. Nothing fancy. It's just all about God and praying for our community, our people, and and people and and to see how God is going to be moving in Maywood this this year. Amen. Uh, next Sunday, Serve 101. Well, it's Father's Day, so we will not be having Serve 101 next Sunday, but it is always the second Sunday of the month. Because of Father's Day, we will be having a barbecue 
Uh, next Sunday is also a fundraiser. Oh, next Sunday is not Father's Day. Oh, yes. Well, we still have Serve 101. Yay! And we also have an ice cream. I'm like a week in advance. My mind's going on vacation mode. I'm sorry, guys. Ice cream Sunday is next Sunday, not to, uh, Father's Day. So the, all proceeds, again, for the ice cream social is going to go to the kids' camp, the youth camp, to help our children get to youth camp. It costs about $250 to $275 to send them to youth camp, okay? So we are asking that the church help sponsor or help by purchasing uh, or donating to the kids. Does that make sense? Can you do that? Yes? No? Maybe so? Yes? Awesome. Thank you. All right, so then Father's Day is June 16th, and we have Evangelist uh, Renee Padron coming. We have a food afterwards. It's going to be a and teaching, and well, we, that's Father's Day. Make sure you invite your friends and family and your fathers, grandfathers, loved ones. Five-day club is June 24th, 20th through 28th. I will be sending out an email to have your children sign up. So we know how many kids are coming. It's from 5 to 6.30 right here in the playground over here. If you've never been to a five-day club, it's a great way to get your, your children from the ages of 5 to 12 involved in God, play some games, eat some food, and learn about Jesus. Amen? And then July 7th, I have this up here for a reason. If you want to get baptized, we are going down to the beach. So July 7th, we will not be in this, this building we will be at the beach with Speedos on. No. I don't want to kill anybody. So we will be at the beach doing baptisms. So if you want to get baptized, fill out the U card, say, I want to be baptized, circle that, hand it in, and we will make sure that you get baptized that day. We also will be barbecuing, having live music, and all kinds of fun stuff on the beach. It's just one of my favorite days of the year because... Uh, I like the beach, I like to preach outside, I like to do what Jesus did. So we will grill and have some fun, amen? Amen. And then every Sunday we have a contest going on right now, be our guest and bring a guest. So if you bring a guest, you get a gift, and, a, and your friend, whoever you bring, gets a gift, amen? All right, with all that said, I am done preaching. I am so glad talking. My brother in, in Christ is going to come up. Joel, would you come here, please, for a second? We are going to have you. So nobody, know, if you don't know Joel and Karen, they are missionaries. I, I love saying this now because I, because of that goofy guy. Uh, Jamie. Indonesia. Everybody say it and smile. Big smile. Indonesia. How, how, how does he do it? Indonesia. Oh, yeah, accent. Indonesia. So they're, they're missionaries in Indonesia, but they left right about the same time that we planted the church. And I met you guys at Hope Church a couple times and, and got to know you a little and I'm just excited to have you guys back here on the uh, itinerary and so you are raising more funds to get, to go again, right? Yeah. So I want you to tell us what you're doing out there and and then I'm going to pray over you again. Great. Thank okay? you. Thank you, Pastor. Are you, you yeah, at the bottom. I'm sorry. My bad. There you go. Great. Check, check. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks again, uh, Pastor Anthony. It's, I remember, yeah, I remember distinctly meeting him, meeting uh, Pastor Anthony in the hall at uh, Hope Church and uh, him telling me this is what he wanted to do. This is what he felt God calling him to do. But it was just in his head. <laughs> it was in his heart. And here it is. Praise God. It's happening. And so it's so exciting, so exciting to, to finally get to be here and uh, meet all of you. Um, if you didn't know, Impact Church supports us in our mission to Indonesia. And so first of all, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for, for sacrificing so that we can be uh, follow God's call and be the salt and light in a place like Indonesia. Who's ever even like kind of knows where Indonesia might be on the map? Anybody? <laughs> all right, all right. My brother from Vietnam actually probably went the closest. Uh, if you could throw, I don't know if that slide is working or not yet. But um, Indonesia is, is kind of sandwiched between 
uh, it's it's a thousands of islands in between Vietnam and Australia, and uh, it's actually the fourth largest. Believe it or not, it's the fourth largest country in population, right after the U.S. So it goes uh, China or India, and then the U.S. and then Indonesia. Believe it or not, so millions and millions of people. Um, it's also the, the largest Muslim-majority country in the world. So it's not Saudi Arabia, it's not Jordan, or it's not any of those Middle Eastern countries. It's actually Indonesia. Um, and that means there's, there's about a quarter billion Muslims living in this island nation, believe it or not. So huge, huge mission field. Um, we, we have, uh, here, in, here in America... And, you know, here, this is, there's, there's some, a lot of diversity here. You know, I'm from this culture. I'm from this background. I'm from this ethnicity. Indonesia's got 100, uh, sorry, has hundreds of those ethnicities. But in Indonesia, 100 of them, think about this, 100 people groups, uh, uh, language groups have never heard the gospel. And we call them never reached. Nobody's ever gone there yet to share the gospel. So we're praying uh, that God is going to raise up people to reach those uh, uh, unreached people groups, those never reached people groups. They're still waiting to hear the gospel. So we we spent our last term uh, in in 2015. We felt a call to go to Indonesia, and by 2016 we were able to uh, finally go there. And our first term, we worked, we focused on uh, college students. We did campus ministry, and um, we had a heart, man, like. Lord, use us. Use us to reach these people. Use us to reach Muslims uh, with the gospel. And praise God, during our first term, we saw five Muslim background uh, students come to faith in Jesus Christ. And that we, yeah, come on. Let's praise the Lord for that. Uh, if any of you know, ministry, uh, ministry with Muslims is, is not easy. Um, trying to have conversations about Jesus uh, usually leads to dead ends. But Praise God, Indonesia, even though it's the largest Muslim country, is, is quite open. People are really quite open to, to converse about Jesus. Because in Islam, Jesus is, is revered as a, as a prophet. So talking about Jesus can lead towards the gospel. But anyway, so we f- saw five, five Muslims come to Christ during our time there. But as we were returning, planning to return, I'm praying about returning to Indonesia, we prayed and said, Lord, how can we multiply our impact in Indonesia? We want to see more Muslims come to Christ. We want to see these, these never-reached people groups come to Christ. But how can we multiply our impact? And we felt like the Lord answered and, and was, was clear in directing us and saying it's about reaching, about engaging the next generation of church leaders. And so God pro- plopped us right in the middle of the largest Assemblies of God seminary in Indonesia called Sati. And uh, he let us, God flung open the doors for us to be, here, be there. And uh, this is, the, you know, these, every year dozens and dozens of students head out all over Indonesia from east to west. There's 6,000 inhabited islands. There's, there's more uninhabited islands. From east to west, these students are going out and becoming the, the new pastors, the new missionaries, the new teachers, professors, you name it. And they're going to they're gonna have a huge impact on Indonesia, right? So God placed us there to, to have that influence, have that place of influence among, among them. And we were like, man, what if they can get it? What if they can get the heart for missions? What if they can get a heart to reach the never reached? And I'm going to say this, and maybe maybe... Uh, uh, you can take this, too, into your, your own context. I want us to ask, why are there still anybody that lost? Why is there still anybody lost? Sometimes it's, the, it's truly a, the hardness of heart. The person is chosen. I don't, want, I don't want anything to do with God. But sometimes, let's be honest, it's because we're not doing our jobs, right? It's because we're not bold enough. We're not courageous enough to share with our neighbors or our family members. And the same goes for over there. There's there are Christians there. Uh, there's this Bible school. There's other Bible schools. But there's still 100 never reach people groups. And that amounts to about 100 million people still waiting to hear the gospel. That's like a third of the population of the United States, right? So it's like, Lord, 
what if what if they get this vision and say, man, I'm willing, I'm willing to go. I'm willing to, to go to, 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 to those places where nobody's ever gone before and share the love of Jesus and be the light in that dark place. So that's, that's been our prayer. And Lord, if you can go back to the uh, previous slides. Uh, yeah, so that, those are just some of our colleagues. The Lord, the Lord really just opened up the doors for us. <coughs> We've only been there for now two years at this college campus. And the Lord had <coughs> opened the doors for us to join the faculty and also for me to be on the board of directors. And so I get to sit. The Lord has given us a, a strategic position to not only influence the students, but also have a place at the table among some of the, the greatest, the, the most influential church leaders in Indonesia, particularly in the Assemblies of God, but in general in Indonesia. And so we, we believe God has positioned us to be that voice, to continue to share this great need of what of, of reaching the never reached. And so one of the, I, I feel like one of the most rewarding things that we got to do was, so I, I, I sit on a, on a committee, on a small committee, where every summer we send out our students to go do ministry all over Indonesia. And in the past, we've sent them more to like a local church to do church ministry. And I'm going to be honest, I love what impact, I love all those announcements. Why? It's because you, it's not so much like, hey, let's just hang out in this room. No, you guys are going out there. You guys are having an impact in the community. You guys are doing outreach. It's sad to say, but a lot of churches, and you know this probably, a lot of churches tend to just kind of circle the wagons. Let's have fellowship within the church. Let's do church. And, and the same goes for a lot of churches in Indonesia. So a lot of our students, they go to a local church. They learn how to do Sunday school. They learn how to lead worship but they're not doing outreach. A lot of the churches aren't learning how to do outreach. And so <clears throat> I'm sitting in this meeting. If you could go to the next slide. I'm sitting in this meeting, and we're, we're placing these students in the, different pla- in the different ministries. I just pipe up, and I said, hey, I love that, that our students are going, and they're learning how to do ministry inside of a church, inside the four walls of a church. But what if we go send them to the Never Reached? And praise God, there's, there's, a, there's a structure set up for, for recruits. Just nobody's signed up yet. <laughs> there's there's five, five people groups that, that have been targeted among the Assemblies of God. And so I said, hey, I'm going to give my friend a call, who's the director of that. And just like that, four, we, we got to send four students to a, and on a pioneering trip to one of these Never Reach People groups on a different island. And so... Uh, this is the this is the this is the team that got to go. If you can uh, the next uh, show the next slide is <clears throat> the team out there on the island of Kangian, uh, which is has no churches. There's no church there yet. They've they've been sitting there. It's not even that far of a boat. You got to take a boat. Not terribly far of a boat trip to get out there. But here they are. They're 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 meeting people, and the people they're meeting have probably never met a Christian before in their life. This is the first time that they're interacting with a Christian. And hey, <clears throat> I wish I could be there in some ways. In fact, I, I called the guy and I said, can I go? And he said, you know what? It's better that you don't. It's better that Indonesians do it. Because, hey, I'm going to stick out like a sore thumb, you know? <laughs> hey, I show up, you know, this big bald white guy. Like, they might freak out, like, who are you, you know? But an Indonesian... They, they, they don't really think twice. It's like, oh, yeah, you're visiting our island. So that's our heart. It's like we want to see God multiply our impact in Indonesia. We could go there. We could live among them. And sometimes you hear stories of, of that. But praise God, there's a church that we are getting behind to do this. <clears throat> and so our vision for the next five years is simple. It's just five and five. We want to see five Indonesian workers amongst the the never reached in the next five years. We, we're praying, we're believing God. That would be a miracle. So far, only a couple people have signed up to work among the never reached, amongst the, uh, at least the, the, uh, the Indonesian assemblies of God. And so we're believing that the Lord's going to increase that five by fi- five and five. And so would you continue to believe with us, continue to pray with us? Thank you. 
from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for your support. Thank you. It really makes a difference. Be, and I, I'll say this. Because of your support, <clears throat> we've been able to send, we were able to send those four students and, and cover the cost, basically, uh, because, because of the generosity of, of this church and other churches. So it makes a huge difference. And uh, if you want to just, <clears throat> I don't know, pull out your phones or you could just grab a card in the back. Uh, we'd love to stay connected with you. If you want to get some updates from us or connect on our Facebook group, we send out updates on the Facebook group. Uh, we'd love to stay connected to you personally that way. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Ethan. I, I, I don't go anywhere. We have a special gift for you and your wife because Indonesia, they have coffee. They do. They do. And it's pretty good. <laughs> really good so we have a couple of wow. gifts for you. Um, but I, I do want to pray over you again because... Um, you said they don't, they're only asking you got a simple plan, I like it five and five, I love it you, don't, you didn't complicate it, you didn't make it all crazy five and five Do you, who thinks God can give them five? so Father God, I, I, I raise up Joel and Karen and uh, Josie and, and Raymond but right now Father God that, uh, watch over them and I know healing is coming I'm not just saying that I know healing is coming. I know finances are coming. I know doors are going to keep opening. Lord, give him wisdom. But it's because he's six on boards. Father God, give him the wisdom to be able to lead those boards in a godly manner. Open up the doors that need to be opened to plant five more little churches. And when I say little, Father God, nothing's little to you. So, Lord, I ask, not, I ask for the multiplication of those five, Father God, that they come. By the time he gets back, he has his five, Father God. Then they're able to go out into the world to go do your work, Father God, yeah. to go to unreached people places and groups and to be able to speak their language, to be able to understand their culture, to be able to bring who Jesus really is, our Savior. Watch over them, guide them, lead them, and love them. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. Amen, amen brother. I love you. I'm so glad you guys finally got to come. So, um, all right. So I'm going to go quick because we still got communion. Everybody do me a favor. Stand up. Thank you. Ready? Set. One, two, three. Four. We've been sitting way too long, right? Time to get some stretches in, get some, some, uh, all right. I got, who thinks I can preach in 10 minutes? It's 11.51, I can go in 10 minutes? Because I want to go in 10 minutes. All right, so you guys can have a seat. We have been in this series called The God We All Need to Know, and we're not done with it because God's not done with us, right? Amen? All right, so we talked a lot about the Holy Spirit. This whole message is about the Holy Spirit, okay? And the whole, because it's the God, I think, that we leave out of it. The Holy Spirit, like I said earlier, gives us the superpower that, God, that Jesus said he was going to give to us. And we truly are superhuman when we allow the, the Holy Spirit to work in us and out of us and through us into other people's lives, Amen. So we are going to keep talking about the Holy Spirit today. We're going to talk about the beautiful gifts of the Holy Spirit. I am not, I, I, there's a bunch of them. I, I wanted to break them up so you, I could really talk about them, okay? And that you could really go home throughout the week and apply them to your life and, and to think about them and to meditate on them and to, to allow them to, to help you, okay? So I'm, I'm being serious right now. Can you guys all stand? We're going to read the Word of God. So, I am going to have you stand again. Movement is good for your body and your soul. The spirit is not supposed to sit. It is supposed to go. That's what spirit means, is ah, the breath, right? And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul writes about these gifts that the spirit gives us. And he says, now about the gifts of the spirit, brothers and sisters, I do, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know 
that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are, verse 4 says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. So there's not like a spirit of this, spirit of this. It's the Holy Spirit gives us these different gifts that, they, that he gives to us, and he can take from us. They're not our gifts to keep. They're his gifts to distribute. And there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of work, but in all of them and in everyone, it's the same God at work. Verse 7 says on your sheet, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. It's, it, these gifts are for the common good. Again, they're not for us. They're for us to, be, to edify God and to use them for God's work. It's not our work. We get to glorify him because of this. Does that make sense? It's the manifestation of for a common good, not our good. To one, there is, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. And to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these work, all, all these are the work of one and the same spirit. Not eight different spirits, one spirit, and he distrib distributes them to each one just as he determines. Amen? Amen? Father God, as we go into and break these down one by one, let us understand, let us have the gift of wisdom to understand to take the other gifts of prophecy and tongues and teachings and, and wisdom and knowledge and, and apply them to our lives and to this world. Open up our ears right now to your message, to your words. Open up our eyes to actually read and, and understand. Open up our mind to have the power of the Spirit work with it to lead into the world, Father God, and to, to use your giftings as you please so we can do your work here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You guys can have a seat. The first one I want to talk about today is a word of knowledge. A word of knowledge. I was kind of, today, a word of knowledge, Tracy did, the Spirit just spoke to her, and she said, Anthony, you have any uh, uh, oil? I mean, the Lord wants to anoint feet again. There was a man a couple weeks ago walking down the street that I didn't know from Adam, but he was looked like he was in pain, and I said, your back's hurting you. And he said, yeah, how'd you know that? I didn't. I had no clue. I never met this man before. His name was Marcus. I prayed for him. He got healed. He said, I, got, I saw him at the, at the outing on Wednesday, on Thursday, and he said, Pastor, whatever you did healed me. I said, I didn't do it. Jesus did. He gave me the healing that day, but it gave me, he gave me a word of knowledge beforehand to speak into his life about his back being hurt. See, that particular, particular gift is called a word of knowledge, and it falls into a category known as a discerning gifts. Simply, what that means is a word of knowledge is known as something, known, knowing something specific without having learned it by nature. And that's what a word, it's just simply something specific without having learned it by natural means. I didn't know Marcus before this day, but I knew that when I saw him walking, he had pain in his body, amen? It was a word of knowledge by God. Gee, Tracy didn't come here today saying, hey, the Lord was speaking to me to, to anoint people's feet, to go into the world. No, that was a word of knowledge that the Spirit gave her today to give to you guys. And there is a great example in John 4, and, and there's, a, there's a woman, and we all know this, there's a woman sitting at the well, and she's looking for water, and Jesus was there, 
and she was a woman, so Jesus shouldn't have been talking to her in the first place alone. Plus, during the daytime, and she was going for water, where she thought nobody was there because she was a Samaritan, and she probably didn't want to meet anybody because of her background and her history. And it's great. He asks her a question, and he goes and, and says, he asks her to call her husband. And she says she doesn't have one. And Jesus responds in verse 17 and 18, you have well said that. I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one, one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you speak, spoke truly. Jesus gave her something that was nat for him maybe natural because he's God, but that's a word of knowledge about somebody's life that she didn't. And, and what does this lady go and do? She takes this and goes back to the town and starts converting people to Jesus. Starts telling the whole town about Jesus. That's what this thing, this, that man Marcus did. He went and told his friends, hey, Pastor, pray for me. I got here today. Now, I don't know the outcome of what's going to happen after that. Right? But in that instance, we knew. Amen? It's amazing to see people's lives change through the gift of the Spirit, is it not? It's really quite it's, it's awesome and easy. When, when you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit um, and a willing heart, God can do anything through you. Truly can, if you allow him to. So I have a couple questions for you. Will you commit to listening for the voice of the Holy Spirit today? He might just give you that word of knowledge that can change your life for yourself and for someone around you today. The second uh, gift I want to talk about is discerning spirits. I got a question for you. Discerning spirits. It's in Spanish also. If there was an intruder in your home, would you want to know about it? Jermaine, if there was an intruder in your home besides your husband, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, if there was an intruder in your home, would you want to know? I would want to know. I remember one day I went out for a walk in my condo and I took my dog with me and I closed the door. And when I got back, the door was locked. I didn't lock the door. Actually, both doors were locked. I didn't lock the door because we have a keypad, so I don't have to lock the door. It locks itself. So I knew that one was going to be locked, but the top lock, the bolt, locked. And so did my screen door lock. I was freaked out. Who else would be freaked out? There's an intruder in my house. I want to know. I called the fire department. Please, somebody's in my house. There was nobody there. I don't know how. I still, to this day, have no idea how my door is locked. Freaky, right? But I want to know the answer, right? So if I know there's an intruder in my house, I want to know about it, right? Of course you would. And you would want to remove that intruder, would you not? Like I made the, and I, you know, I'm a, I'll fight if I have to fight. I don't want to fight. I don't like fighting anymore. So I, I walked through the house, but I made sure I had a policeman in front of me that day, cause, and a fireman behind me, <laughs> right? Because I want to take that intruder out of my house. Still have no idea what that, what that intruder was. But you would pretty much do anything you could to get that removed out of your house. Am I right? Unfortunately, that scenario that I just described is the spiritual lives of many Christians when it comes to dem demonic spirits. There are, really are demonic spirits out there. I, I don't know if you believe in it, but I do. And I've seen it. So I want to make a distinction here, though. There's a difference about being possessed by a demon, a demonic spirit, and being influenced by one. I truly don't believe that a Christian, a believer, can be have a demonic spirit living inside of you. You can be influenced by one, and I can give you examples of that. In the Bible, there was a man by the name of Legion. And Jesus was, takes his people over to Galilee, and there's a man who did not know Jesus, and when he meets him, he says, what's your name? And he says, Legion. 
That means there was a thousand to ten thousand spirits, demonic spirits inside of him. And what does Jesus do? He casts him out. And what the word says is he was not in his right mind. But after Jesus casted the demons out, he was in his right mind. See, before we come to Christ, there's a door open on us that the d- demons could come into our lives. When I gave up my life and said, I don't want God in my life, I let demonic influences into my life, even though I knew who God was at one point. Even when I was not a believer, I still knew there was a God. I just was influenced by these demonic uh, spirits. Does that make sense? When I gave my life to Christ, those demonic spirits had no more influence in my life when I allowed him to take them out of me. Does that make sense? Just like Legion, and I, I was able to cast them away. He was able to take them out of me. So I truly believe that a, as a believer that gave their heart to, lo- to Christ and lives for Christ, we can't, I don't think we can be possessed by them, but we can be influenced by them. Because we leave doors open to allow that influence to get in and infiltrate, right? Instead of kicking them out, right? See, think of it this way. If a burglar is in your house, does he possess it? No, he doesn't possess it, does he? It's still your house, but he has the ability to do damage in it, right? Same thing with the demonic spirit. If there's a demonic spirit influencing your business or your family or your health or any other area in your life, you need to take authority over it and you need to remove it. How, how do you do this? How, if, you're, how, if you're unaware of a demonic spirit in your, in your life, how, how can you become aware of it? Well, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit gives is the discerning of spirits. I didn't which, it, again, it just simply means we are made aware of the presence of a demonic spirit. When we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, we're able to receive that gift. But I want to point something out. I want you to understand, there is no gift of discernment. You know when people say, oh, I can discern people? That's, that just means you're a good judge. You're, you're judging, you're good at judging people. <laughs> and that's not a gift. Because the more you judge somebody, the more people are going to judge you, the, the word says. That's not a gift. I'm good at reading people. I, I, I can watch a crowd and I can watch a room and I can, why? Because I've been doing it my whole life and I was a scammer at, in, in my life. So I can read people at times. Can I have that? Because if I don't take that, it's just going to keep doing that on you. Thank you. Um, sorry. Uh, let me shut that off for a second. Okay. See? Stop. All right. That's not a gift. It was a skill that I learned. It wasn't. Does that make sense? But I, I have felt the presence of evil in my presence before. I remember a time at Will and Christina's, you guys were having an issue in the apartment because, they, because the owners allowed the door to uh, St. Maria to an, uh, a false god into this apartment building that they have to live in, and they were having issues spiritually and all kinds of weird things were happening. There were spir- evil spirits in this apartment building. I remember taking bass over there. I remember taking Will being there, myself. Uh, I, uh, there were other, somebody else, a couple other guys there. And we literally went in, and I, could, I was standing in the doorway of their apartment that led down the steps, and I honestly could not go past the doorway because I could feel the demonic spirit on the other side of that doorway. And I stood there for, what, 40 minutes? Praying this spirit out of their house. I hate saying this, but a couple days later, the person that was living there all of a sudden died. Ask Christine about it. It's a really God story. 
And I'm, I, I'm not praying. I wasn't praying for the death of this person. I was praying for the spirit to leave. And it just, the spirit took that life. And there's no spirit there no more, right? It's real. The Holy Spirit is. Because there's more to that story, but I don't have time to tell it. So ask Christina, because it's pretty awesome. See, in Acts 16, verses 16 and 18, it says, One day, Paul, Paul was walking down the street doing his ministry to keep the shore. And it says, One day, as he was going down the place of prayer, he met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of, a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. She was a fortune teller. She told stories, right? She made up things, and sometimes they came true, and sometimes they didn't, right? She was using false gods. And it goes on to say in verse 17, she followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you to be saved and teach you how to be saved. Verse 18 says, this went on day after day until Paul got so ex ex exasperated, he got fed up. How many times are you going to leave the door in your life open for the spirit to come in to try to steal your joy, to steal your happiness, to steal your salvation, to steal and teach you lies and tell you lies about your life? Are you exasperated? Are you fed up? With the way your life is, you have the power to change it. Are you willing to close the door on it? And are, are you willing to, to exonerate it and get it out of your life? Because that's what Paul does. He says, I command you. He doesn't say, will you please leave? Well, I, I, I got to be politically correct. I, will you go please now? No, he commands it. God commands commanded the earth to be built. He commanded uh, uh, breath into our lungs. He commanded how the world runs around each other and the planet. He commands the stars to stay in heaven for now. He commands us and gives us that same authority through the Holy Spirit, just as Peter had, just as Paul had, just as Jesus said, I'm going to give you that power to have authority over your life and dominion over this earth. So when you come to me and you speak, oh, I don't have this, I don't, you might not, but you're speaking that into your life. I don't have it yet, but this is what I'm willing to do for it. I'm willing to cast that out. I'm willing to fight for it. I'm willing to command um, not having poverty in my life. I'm not. I'm commanding I'm going to find a job. I'm commanding that doors are going to open for me. I'm demanding health in my life. And he says, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And instantly it left her. Instantly. Is there an area of your life right now in which you need some spiritual discernment? Not judgment, discernment. Does the enemy have a stronghold somewhere in your life? Can you flip that to the Spanish slide, please? So our Spanish people can. On your notes, I have these questions on the back side of them. Because I don't want you just to hear them today. I want you to take them home and I want you to meditate. I want you to think on them. I want you to use the Spirit to allow Him to speak knowledge and wisdom and prophecy into your life so you can command your life. It is God's will we get to do things, but we have the authority to make things also happen in our life. Will you allow the Holy Spirit to reveal these areas into you today so you can take the authority over the enemy and be free? The third one I want to talk about today is the word, a word of wisdom. This, this word of wisdom has been coming up all week. Word of wisdom. The, the children, our youth, 
our greeting Ecclesiastes together. And every morning my wife texts them, read Ecclesiastes 1, read Ecclesiastes 2. Dude, I'm so proud of your son. Man, he, he wakes me up every morning with a text and a verse because he's read it already. I'm, honestly, I'm like, I'm blown away. I'm just like, man, that dude's a stud. Because most people don't even, when they wake up, don't even look. All they look, they look at their phone and go, man, I got five more minutes of sleep. By five, by before 5.30 in the morning, I'm getting a text by this guy waking me up before my alarm. But Ecclesiastes talks about wisdom and get, and understanding life. And I'm proud of them for learning this at a young age. But Proverbs 4, 7 says, getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. Wisdom gives us good judgment. And in James 1, 5, it says, if you need wisdom, ask your generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. And wisdom, wisdom is just not, it's here to help you make good decisions. Solomon made all kinds of good decisions, but he let people influence them. Spiritual influences that didn't need to be in his life. False gods, many women, his lifestyle. And he forgot what wisdom was in his old age. Because if you truly read the book Ecclesiastes, which I think we might just do a whole little summer series on because it's just eating in my heart to understand wisdom and decision making and good life. Amen? Have you ever been overwhelmed by a situation and didn't know what to say and then suddenly God gave, gave you like a solution and came out of nowhere? I've had that happen. There's been many times that instead of making a bad decision, he saved me and helped me make a good decision. This is a gift of, of the Spirit called the Word of Wisdom. And it's one of the discerning gifts. In John 9, there's a story of a man who receives this gift. He, he gets in trouble with the Pharisees. Be, can, 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 I'm going to be mean today. Can you, somebody, can you go ask them to quiet down or go outside? The man, he was a blind beggar. He was blind. And Jesus, the, the, Jesus sees him and he spits in his hands and he rubs his hands. There's so many things wrong with this in the Jewish culture. <laughs> Spitting on his hands, touching a man who is blind, who has, right, he's diseased. You're not supposed to touch them. Plus, it was the Sabbath. It was a Sunday, or for them, Saturday, that he shouldn't have been doing in healing people. But yet, he does it, and he opens up the eyes of this blind man. See, our God is the God of vision. Our God is the God of provision. Our God is the God of sight, of vision. And that's what he gave this young man that day. And he knew it. And what the Pharisees do is, is they mock him. They make fun of him. They ask him questions. Instead of saying, man, that was a miracle by God, and that's his condo with Jesus, the Savior, they ask him questions. And they say to him, in verse 16, this man, Jesus, is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. They were more worried about tradition and law than they were about mercy and grace. In verse 32 through 33, it says, the man replied, this is the blind man, he replies to him, since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened, has anyone opened the eyes of one who is born blind? If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. This man had a word of knowledge. He understood a word of wisdom. He understood who Jesus was, and he spoke boldly about it when these prophecies and Sadducees and Pharisees, they had the word, they had the knowledge, they had the training, and this blind, probably uneducated man had the word of wisdom, though. Because he knew who Jesus Christ was. Because he had that experience with them. 
Do you need to know God's wisdom in your life today? Again, is there a particular event for which you need a divine answer for a solution? If you're facing that decision as a difficult decision today, I truly believe that the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you and give you that word of wisdom. All you need to do is ask and listen. The verse I sent out in the devotion the other day says, Cease striving. Be still. Cease striving and know that I am God. Cease striving. Be still and allow God to be God in your life. Number four, real quick, the gift, a, a, the gift of a pro prophetic message. Can you ask somebody actually call the kids in? We're going to have communion in a minute. <laughs> so, Paul talks about speaking in tongues, speaking all the gift of prophetic, prophetic message, and we're Pentecostal, and I believe in speaking in tongues, and I believe there's power in speaking in tongues. We're going to talk more about all those gifts next week and finish up. But he says in verse 14, uh, in chapter 14, verse 1 of 1 Corinthians, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. This is one of the declarative gifts, and they're designed to encourage the people receiving them. Prophecy it can be so powerful. Do you guys believe words can change somebody's lives? This is what prophecy is. It's not always fortune telling. It's not always telling about the future. But if you keep reading and you learn about really prophecy, what Paul is saying and what he says later on is this is more powerful than speaking in tongues. Why? Because speaking in tongues, like again, I'll talk about next is edifying me because I'm speaking it. Unless you interpret it, it doesn't edify the church. But a prophecy, speaking a message of wisdom, like Tracy did today, that spoke encouragement into your life, did it not? That spoke strength into your life, did it not? It encouraged and it comforted people, did it not? See, first, and this is, this is how you can tell if it's a prophetic message or not. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3, so you skip a couple, and it says, But one who prophesies strengthens others, it encourages them, and it comforts them. So if somebody goes to speak life into your life, a prophetic word in your life, and it doesn't, it doesn't strengthen you, it doesn't encourage you, it doesn't comfort the recipient, if it, but if, if it does discourage, if it does correct, if it does rebuke or brings judgment upon you, that's not a prophetic message. And there's a time to be corrected, but that's not a prophetic message. There's times to be, you know, hey, you're doing this, you need to stop. A prophetic message should encourage, comfort, and help you. Just like you saw today, of getting your feet anointed, there are prophetic messages about you. Imagine what it would be like if every Christian brought encouragement to everyone around them. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 5.11, So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. What if the people in your life who are having a difficult time felt encouraged and blessed by you? See, that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do through you. Will you encourage somebody today? All those questions that I've asked you today are on your paper. Again, I want you to take them home and I want you to look at them and I want you to internalize them because I want the Holy Spirit to give you these, to be able to use them, to be able to encourage others with them, to be able to encourage yourself with them, to help build you up, 
and give you strength. Amen? I want to pray, and then we're going to go into a time of communion. So everybody kind of just bow your heads. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you know all about us, and, you, and, and I pray that you use us at impact to, and impact our lives through the Holy Spirit. Let us open up our, our ears and our eyes to your voice today, and please speak to us, Father God. Holy Spirit, reveal to us any area of, us, of our life where the enemy has this stronghold and is influence, 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 influence us <laughs> in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I take authority over that spirit and I claim it in Christ's name right now. Victory and freedom in, our, in your people's lives today, Father God. Continue to shine a discerning light in our lives, Father God. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you offer the gift of wisdom to us when we need it. I thank you for giving the gifts to us, uh, and we don't have to be highly exalted or sitting on a high stool to get this, these gifts. Let us open up our hearts to receive that word of wisdom from you today. Lord, And I thank you for using us to bring the word of encouragement to each other and the comforts to others through prophecy. So as the week goes on, Lord, let all of us, all believers, that we can speak or receive a prophetic word this week. Let us speak, speak through us, Holy Spirit, today so we can speak to others as the days go on. In Jesus' mighty name, amen? Amen. amen. Again, we are going to go into a time of communion. If you have on your seats our, our communion cups. Um, we believe in open communion at impact. And what does that mean? It means if you are a believer of Jesus Christ, that he died, he was buried, or he was born, well that would help first. If he was born, he was raised, he died, and was buried, and he rose, you are more than welcome to have communion with us. And if you don't have that relationship with Jesus, you don't know Jesus in that way, that he's our Savior, that he gave us a gift like the Holy Spirit of salvation, not by anything that we could do, but by grace, and you would like to, to receive Jesus into your life today, I want you to quiet your heart and just say, Lord, come into my heart. Search my soul. Search my spirit. And ask for forgiveness. Say, Lord, I forgive me please and fill me with the Holy Spirit see when you do that you're opening up your heart to communion to remembering what Christ did for us on the cross and that's what communion is about the remembrance of what Christ did for us on the cross he sat at the table with 12 individuals one that he knew for sure. Actually, he knew all of them were going to betray him at one point. But he didn't kick them away from the table. He invited them to the table, and he said, I'm going somewhere that you can't come with me, and it's going to be painful. And when I do it, I, I'm taking this bread, and I'm going to break it because it's for you. And that's what he did. He took the bread, he broke the bread, gave it to his, to his disciples and said, do this in your memory and for me. Amen? Amen. Then he took a cup of wine, and I say this every time we have communion. Wine is okay to drink as long as we don't use it. Pastor, as a pastor, I took an oath not to drink ever again, and that does not bother me. But in Jesus' time, wine was cleaner than water. <laughs> so did Jesus drink wine? He did, because that was what they had. But it was also a symbol of his blood and what he was going to do on the cross. And he took the cup and he raised the cup and he said, this is my blood which is shed for all. It doesn't say for some. It doesn't say for what color. It says for all. For all nations, 
under this green sky, sun sky, green earth that he has given us. All nations, no matter what creed, color, race, whatever you are. Salvation is a gift because of the cross, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is why we have communion in remembrance of his sacrifice. Amen? I think we are done. It's been a long day. It has, but it's been good. Thank you, wife, for making it longer. No, I'm just kidding. That's the Holy Spirit thing. I'm not going to complain about that. I love you all. We have a saying in Impact. What's that saying? Be a be, be a blessing. So today, tomorrow, the week, make sure that you listen to the Spirit and go out and be a blessing to somebody through your works. Amen? I love you. Go have a great week. God bless. If you need something, let me know. Don't forget we got the fundraiser for the children going on right now.